Yes, a very good evening and thank you for keeping it in TV Uganda. Romeo Busiku is my name and I'm here yet again with another pertinent conversation largely focusing on Kosu Hospital and the good work they've been doing since 2009. Well, well we are talking about the comprehensive, yes, that is Kosu, comprehensive rehabilitation services uh, for people with disability in Uganda. is a specialty organization uh, or NGO that has been in operation at least since 2009. They offer high quality rehabilitation services and also many other services at that particular specialty hospital during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic they did not shut down and they did not even fire a single staff member working for that particular NGO they actually uh, endured through the COVID-19 pandemic and they still extended services to persons with disabilities who are grappling during that time we are talking about some 33 some uh, 33,000, you understand, uh, surgeries that have been performed by this particular organization and over 64,000 rehabilitations that have also been uh, put into place by Kosu a Hospital in that regard. So we'd like to know what are some of the challenges that they've, they've, they've endured since 2009 and what are some of the success stories that they could verifiably boast about. We do have the public relations officer for Kosu Hospital, that is none other than Dorothy Motabazi. She's not alone. We also are joined by Mr. Masambu Cornelius, a plastic surgeon at that particular specialty hospital, who are going to be letting us in on some of the machinations of Kosu Hospital, a comprehensive rehabilitation services for people with disability in Uganda. Very good evening, Dorothy and Mr. Masambu. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for hosting us. Indeed. All right, we want to first know a little bit about Kosu. What exactly is Kosu for the viewer or listener who is just watching uh, or hearing this conversation for the very first time? Um, you gave us a very good introduction. Mm. I would like to say Kosu is a home for people with disability. Mm. Uh, and why do I, what do I mean by this? Mm. Uh, other hospitals focus on maternal health, others cancer, and different other services. Mm, but indeed. Kosu was majorly set up with a major impact of transforming lives of people with disability. Mm. Our major focus is on plastic surgery, uh, orthopedic surgery, mm. rehabilitation services, mm. and uh, we, we pride ourselves in offering comprehensive, not just surgery, mm. not just therapy, but having mm. the whole entire package in one go. And, and that's why we call ourselves a home for people with physical disability. Indeed. What are some of those disabilities that you work on as Kosu Hospital? Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, we have, majorly we focus on physical disability. Physical disabilities. Yes. And uh, in physical disability, I'll say in plastic, we focus on uh, cleft lip and palate. Uh, we have a burn uh, Let's first focus on the cleft lip and palate. What, what is it exactly? I think Cornelius would be better <laughs> placed being a plastic surgeon. Indeed. But let's, okay, let's first break them down. The cleft lip and palate. The mm -hmm. cleft lip and palate. Mm. Uh, band contractures, mm. uh, we are looking at mandible tumors, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, all the nerve microsurgery mm. we carry it out at COSU. In terms of plastic, we have the cosmetic surgery. Mm. Uh, in the cosmetic surgery, we are talking about the breast augmentation or reductions. We are looking at the... the you even do breast augmentation yes we do reduction and increase yes in do. uganda here yes we do I see. and uh we pride in that mm. uh we also do uh the 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 brazilian butt lift mm. is also carried out at kosu we can shape you in any size you want uh on the orthopedic side mm. uh we have the club foot uh we have the knock knees mm. uh commonly known as the nkobogo uh, we have bitege, mm. uh, which is the bow legs. Uh, we have osteomyelitis. This mm. is the infection of the bone. Uh, we have fractures. Uh, we also 
We also carry out hip replacements, knee replacements. When I talk about these, these are high-end surgeries mm. that are carried out at COSU. Uh, we have orthoplastic surgery. These are flaps. Uh, Dr. Cornelius will be able to expand on that. Mm. Uh, we have rehabilitation services. In the rehabilitation services, we have therapy in disciplines of uh, physiotherapy, occupation therapy, speech and language therapy. Uh, we have nutrition therapy. Uh, we also have um, a fully fledged workshop. What do I mean by a workshop? Mm. Uh, this is where we produce uh, artificial limbs, like artificial assistive devices. We have artificial mm. hands and legs for people who have been amputated. Uh, we also have uh, nutrition rehabilitation. And uh, we have a small section of uh, fistula. And uh, for women with fistula, mm. uh, mm. We, we, we are we are happy that we also cater for that section of disability because mm. uh, many people tend to not want to relate with women with uh, fistula. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, we, we also carry out community-based inclusive development. Mm. That is, we reach out to people in the field, in the communities, to to encourage and advocate for the rights of people with disability. Mm. Yeah. And I believe that is the nice. biggest tenant coming in from uh, mm -hmm. a Kosu Hospital, that community-based uh, inclusive development approach. The fact that you go to the communities, you talk to the people, find out their problems, and then you fix it at 100% comprehensively. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. How does it work? Uh, I would like to like say... Like if you just come to my village find out that maybe I have a child that was born with a cleft lip and palate and then if we are going to uh, go undergo any kind of surgery Coast Hospital would foot all the bills thank you thank you so mm. much uh, I would like to say we have different mm. programs that are running um, we have the community based inclusive mm. development and we have our CBID project which yes. is sponsored by uh, BMZ mm. and uh, CBM and uh, this project is being implemented in, uh, uh, by three partners, mm. that is ours in uh, Barara. We have Katale Machai Share Home. Mm. And uh, majorly, we, I, I would say on the different programs, and in that major program, we reach out to the people in the communities, mm. educate them about living mm. with disability, early identification of people with disability. If you have a child with cleft, what do you do? Do mm. not hide. Mm. Go to the next hospital <coughs> next to you, to a referral hospital. They'll be able to provide services. Mm. If they cannot, they know the right hospitals too. Do you have to go to Mlago? Do you go to Kosu Hospital? Mm. Where do you need the specialized care? To a person with disabi disability is not in an inability. Mm. How do you treat someone with disability? How mm. do we live with people with disability? How do we, the psychosocial support that is provided to people with disability? Some mothers, when they, they know they have children with disability, they feel like they are cursed. To other people, they believe disabilities are cursed, which is not true. Mm, sometimes we have to educate them. How do you, if you have a child with disability, if you have long-term disability like cerebral palsy, mm. how do you feed these children? Indeed. How do you educate them? How do you live with them? So we, in the community-based inclusive mm. development, we are trying to see in the community, what are people doing? Then we take them to hospital setting. What is the rehabilitation process during the hospital stay? Then the after service, how do we follow up after surgery? How do we do the therapy? Mm. Therapy to support the surgical effect until the child is fully integrated mm. into the community. Well, of course, that helps us not to neglect these young children because mm. one too many times when society looks at a child and they have a disability, they actually tend to neglect them and sideline them. But here you're giving them hope. You're saying, you know what, this young uh, three-month child can smile again, even though they were born with a cleft lip and palate at the end of the day. If uh, I was born with uh, maybe a deformity, there is a chance with plastic surgery, like Mr. Masambu Cornelius is going to be enticing us with those uh, details <laughs> at uh, the Comprehensive uh, Rehabilitation uh, Services for uh, People with Disability in Uganda. And in short, that is Kosu Hospital. Like we were saying, they've been doing some good work since 2009. And uh, by 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, over 33,000 surgeries were performed and over 64,000 uh, rehabilitation services were also offered to the people, even though there was no movement that 
that was taking center stage, they took it upon themselves, especially with that tenant of the community-based uh, inclusive development approach, where they come to you to understand as the patient in that regard. So we've spoken about plastic surgery, but what is plastic surgery? You could be there in your living room and you're thinking, are they performing surgeries on plastic? Hmm? my cop in the living room are they performing <laughs> surgeries on that what do they mean by plastic surgery but of course we are here to break those myths and misconceptions about the same uh, mr masambu cornelius is going to be enticing us with those details what is plastic surgery ah thank you romeo mm -hmm. first for inviting us here okay. and giving us the opportunity to actually make aware mm. to the public that there's something good we have and there's something good we can mm. give to our people. Mm. Um, so, plastic surgery, most of uh, the people, of course, get one, we normally call it tunnel vision. You just have one way of thinking. Plastic surgery is about body enhancement. Just a couple of patients, or not even patients, clients, mm. who wish to look better. But, uh, that's not that's just five percent of what we do mm. and we we are happy that we address that however uh, plastic surgery takes its roots way back into the first and second world war we are following a lot of injury mm -hmm. people are disfigured and so a lot of research a lot of innovation went on during that time um, much more spelled in <coughs> the in the United States and also in mm. Europe I see. on trying to restore the form, function, and shape of what was lost. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the name came from, okay? So you've lost your form, and that's addressing those who are born with certain defects. There is no form, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. You have lost your function. Is it a cancer that you have had? Imagine a lady that has a breast cancer and has had surgery. And normally, the commonest surgery offered around is what we call a mastectomy. Take mm. off the breast. Indeed. You've lost form, you've lost function. And what we are doing then is we are increasing your quality of life. It's no longer about survival. It's not about life-saving surgery. Mm. It's about what quality of life do you live? That's what plastic surgery aims to address. And so... And you're telling us it became popular during the World War I, World War II wars. Yeah, because when, when mm. there was a ceasefire and when there was a relative mm. um, agency of peace mm. called for the quality of the soldiers that had been involved in the wars. The landmines and everything exactly. that took off their lives. Yeah, so mm. their lives were saved, mm. and that's good, but their quality of life was not worth mm. uh, writing home about. And because of that, there came an increased unmet need, and that's where plastic surgery really grew up from, let's say, the mushrooms or from the nursery to what mm. it is. Is it only the wars or even the Spanish flu of the t at the time that no, affected over 500,000, 500, 000, the, the 500 million really, people? Uh, and over the flu did not disable death. anyone, mm. yeah, but it's largely the war. Mm. It's largely the, the war. The war. Mm. So this, this has been uh, an ever-increasing um, service. Right now, um, I'm a proud member mm. of the Association of Plastic Surgeons of Uganda, mm. where in I'm a secretary of the association. And uh, as we speak, we're about 17 in the country. Mm. And probably in the next five years, we'll double that number. Indeed. However, that said, that's where plastics has come from. Mm. Um, when it comes to COSU, now you see how plastics then fits in perfectly into the picture of COSU, where we find that disability can either be congenital, meaning a birth deformity that you have, mm. it can be acquired through infections, okay, through burns, through trauma, mm. you have an, ac an accident or something like that, or cancers that just debilitate you. Mm, and that's where we come in to address that. Mm. I see. So you can give us some of the types of uh, plastic surgery that you do at uh, Koso Hospital. Well, mm. Koso Hospital is a center of its, I mean, unique mm. to its uh, itself in, in the sense that uh, we get the 
the, the picture of comprehensive mm. uh, care, comprehensive disability care, mm. where we believe, just like the African um, proverb goes, it takes a village to, to raise a child, it takes a team to finally manage a child with disability. Mm. Uh, concerning the plastic surgery, we have uh, deformities that come as a result of uh, mm. birth, yes. okay, and these are largely the commonest being cleft lip and palate because mm. Mm. in terms of frequency, that's the commonest head deformity that you will find. Uh, Maybe we you can break it down for our, for, for our viewers. They yes. know what it is, but they may not know what you mean, the cleft lip and palate. And so many mothers ah. are grappling with the same yeah, yeah, when yeah, it comes yeah. to their children. Yes. Mm. So um, a cleft a cleft is just an English word, mm. mean a separation. Indeed. Yeah, so a cleft lip is a separation of the lip. A cleft palate is a separation of mm. the palate. What's the palate? The palate is the roof of your mouth. When mm. you raise your tongue up, that the roof of your mouth, that's the palate. So mm. a hole, a separation then creates a hole between your nose mm. and your and, the lip. and your mouth. That's yeah. the palate. Mm. Yeah. So that gets to be called a cleft palate. Mm. And then for the lip, then it's a separation of the lip and the nose. Um, so you have a space between the outer lip and then the outer nose that you may call. That's what we call a cleft lip and palate. What causes it's it? One of the commonest. Hmm. Well, um, the word cause is quite a <laughs> very scientific word hmm. to be very careful to, to, to point. However, hmm. we know that um, the incidence is about 1 in 800 among our population mm. will definitely get a cleft lip and palate. What causes it? It's, uh, there are few that we have studied in and we are sure that they are familiar, but that's a very mm. small percentage. And then for most of them, they are called sporadic. We have a few uh, what we call uh, associated factors, meaning if you have your antenatal late and don't get your folic acid on time and and things like that, there are chances that mm. you might get a cleft lip and palate. However, that is not really, really uh, cast in stone, that because you have not had this, you're definitely going to get that. Mm. And of course, we are here to give hope to the mothers out there. Uh, we have a mother that could be having a three-month-old yeah. yeah. daughter yeah. who was born with a cleft lip and palate, and they are thinking, maybe it is too late for me. I should have done it earlier. Could we just give them information right now to tell them that there is still hope and that deformity could be corrected through the surgeries that you do at Kosovo? Oh, oh, thank mm. you. Um, when should I be alarmed that it is too late not to take a child for surgery? It's never too late. Mm. It's never too late. In fact, mm. Romeo, the oldest patient I've ever operated with yes, a cleft lip and mm. palate was 78 years old. 78? Hmm. 78 years old. She came in and uh, it was interesting because of our tradition. People hmm. have a fear for surgery. So when she came in and we performed surgery to her, she said, now I'm going to let my grandchildren and all the rest hmm. know I have survived this. Hmm. It's not too late to have a cleft surgery. However, hmm. we, we want to see you as early as you notice that your child has mm. a cleft lip and palate. It's easier for you to see a cleft lip Indeed. because it's abstract. Yeah. Mm. The problem is the palate. How are you going to know this? If your child um, at birth, as they cry, has what you may call an inverted vellum mm. uh, or um, we call it a soft palate. Mm. You just find a U-shaped hall in there it's high time you come mm. if you find that your child while they drink or while they breastfeed mm. um, milk is coming out of the nose it just means there's a communication that probably you have not seen that you've is a cleft seen palate. such a child in your neighborhood you've seen that picture one too many times within your community that's what we mean by a cleft leap and palate it's really really too common but yeah, the doctors that's really here yeah, are yeah, telling yeah. us that is that can actually be corrected exactly. through surgery <coughs> and your child could actually go back to living a normal normal life and they've also reminded you that the 7 to 8 year old also can went have through the, the same and got that corrected. But then you were t telling oh, us oh. how we can actually tell mm -hmm. that someone has a someone palate. Has that's, a why, palate. that's where the trick is, mm. the palate, the palate. And uh, with, with the cleft palate, you will find that some children cannot speak well. Indeed. 
because the, the, the soft palate controls our speech. Mm. And so they will have lots of speech as though they are speaking from the nose. Yes. And you should know that the child has no problem apart from something that can be corrected. Mm. And we are there to address this. Breast milk will be spilling all over spilling, the place. Spilling, exactly. If they start talking, mm. they won't pronounce certain syllables well. Indeed. All right? And so we will be able to have, have them. The good news is for this, cleft mm. lip and palate, mm. every service at COSO is free. Free of charge. Free of charge, including, wow. including, Romeo, listen to this, mm. transport refund. Mr. Masambu, don't, um, <laughs> don't pull my leg. Don't pull my leg. We, do have we are so passionate. Who are grappling we are with so finances. passionate about this. I'm a mother in Chazanga. You're yes. telling me, even though I were to get a taxi, come to Kosu Rehabilitation Center, there will be a transport refund and full comprehensive surgery done on my child. Surgery, speech therapy, nutrition, and what hits it all is a transport refund. Wow. For wow. cleft lip and palate. Mm. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't That's really what get keeps us any gold. better than that. Thank you. <laughs> Dorothy, you can pitch in on that one. Uh, just mm. to, to mention, I'd like to say special appreciation mm. to our donor, Smile yeah. Train mm. and Transforming Faces. I know our listeners are going to come and say, we saw all the services are free. <laughs> I'd like to emphasize that. <laughs> concerning uh, this, yeah. Concerning this, that yes. uh, cleft lip and mm. palate mm. is uh, fully subsidized. It's not free, mm. but we have a donor who is paying for this. So, mm. yes, uh, on the medical side, it's free, but we have mm. donors who are subsidizing this, and mm. we encourage the public out there. We still mm. have other conditions that are very, mm. very vulnerable like club foot club yeah. foot yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, club foot is currently covered below mm. two years so we encourage mothers if you have a child with club foot early detection and early referral is the cheapest thing mm. to do don't if tie the child on a tree and neglect them in the community <laughs> if you do bring that. them mm. early yeah. if you bring a child early the cost will be low mm. yeah. we'll use yeah. low cost methods uh mm reconstruction of a bone for a child who is below two years mm. or five years is a little cheaper mm. compared to mm. an adult who is going to come at that age mm. to we encourage organizations that are out there children with disability really need a lot of help mm. sometimes we cater for surgery sometimes we, we we have done this wonderful surgery for 12 million but they cannot get up for transport. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why you see some donors like Transforming Faces came in to support that because we're seeing we're doing surgery, but patients were not coming back. As mm -hmm. long as the mouth is covered, it's like, I don't have to come back for speech and language therapy. Yeah, but that's yeah. not what we want. Mm -hmm. We want the child to be fully, to mm -hmm. receive the full package. That's why we have that uh, transport refund for cleft. However, for other conditions, uh, we still have a need there. We subsidize services according to different conditions mm, and according yeah. to our donors that are available. So please, I know mothers are going to be coming, but it's cleft lip and palate that has that package. Yeah. Other conditions uh, we subsidize and we are still working on it and we encourage. If, if, they have, if they have a donor, I mean, reach us. <laughs> we are there for you. If you have a donor, <laughs> uh, if you, we, if we, you we can, can give them. funds, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter how small. Mm, we yeah. receive it for the people with disability. Yeah. And that is what COSU is here for, and that has been their major objective at least to, since 2009, to yeah. offer high-quality yeah. rehabilitation and uh, surgical services to the persons with disabilities here in Uganda. So indeed, if you are out there, you have a child, a mother, a father, a sister, who is grappling with the same, please look no uh, further than that is COSU Specialty Hospital will be able to give you everything that you want. 32,000 surgeries have already been undertaken and over 64,000 rehabilitation services offered to our people uh, during these very, very trying times, including the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, that is some of the good news coming in from uh, Kosu Hospital. So we are still here with uh, Dorothy Mutabazi and also Mr. Masambu uh, Cornelius. He has talked to us about uh, the cleft lip and palate. So we'd like to know more about club foot. Club foot, what is it, Mr. Masambu? <coughs> Um, club food, thank you. <coughs> club food is, uh, you know, uh, I, I like making it easy mm -hmm. for someone to understand. 
club is an English word, Indeed. right? Mm. And the commonest club you'll find is in people who play hockey and uh, golf. Yes. Okay? That, that's called the club. Mm. So a club foot is a foot that just looks like a club. I see. So you find that uh, it can occur in both legs, what we call bilateral, mm. or it can occur in one, what we call unilateral. So it's yes. the foot from the ankle to the tips of your toes. That's what we call the foot. It's quite arched on the inside and bent towards, let's say, both big toes mm. want to come together if, it, if it's bilateral. Mm. That's what we call a club foot. So this can occur in isolation or it can occur mm. together with other birth deformities, Defense, yeah. what we call syndromic. Uh, mm. I've seen quite a number of patients having cleft and club foot. Yes. Mm. Um, so that's what a club foot is. There is your club foot on our screen. We can, talk, exactly, we can also yeah. talk about you, the you clauses. Can see the club as it is. We yeah. can also talk about the causes of the same. Yeah. Hmm. So um, the the club foot causes the uh, could be divided into two. Hmm. Yeah. If it stands on its own, what we call uh, the, the 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 classic club foot, then the actual cause is not known. However, hmm. if it's a mechanical problem hmm. um, causing the foot to angle in, and hmm. this tends to happen in 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 syndromic club feet, right? That is uh, when you find, for example, a child has a condition called spina bifida. Yeah? Yes. That is an, ab uh, an abnormality on the spinal cord. It causes denervation of that affected side of mm. the foot. And because of that, there is a muscle imbalance create created, causing the foot to arch on the inside. Mm. So the mechanical forces then give us what we call a guaranteed cause. But for these others that just stand on their own, mm. we actually don't yet have mm. them. The I can hear yeah. two tenants in there, orthopedic surgery and also plastic surgery. And I didn't want to, confu to confuse our viewers and listeners uh, who are watching this right now. So yeah. what is the difference between orthopedic surgery and plastic surgery? Oh. So orthopedic hmm. simply means bone. I see. All right. So surgery to the bone of course it's it's more than just this that. is the club foot we are talking about yeah mm. for the for the club foot and the orthopedic surgery yeah because uh, most of it is the muscle bone imbalances that mm. are coming as a result mm. and um, for 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 purposes of uh, of of improving care follow-up and everything they lie under orthopedic mm. surgery i see yeah and uh, and and and, that, and that's it. They, it it's, it's a major uh, discipline in pediatric orthopedics, mm. wherein we have a lot of surgeons mm. doing that. All right. You were still telling us more about uh, plastic surgery before I interrupted you. You had talked to us about the cleft lip and palate. Uh, yeah. Talked to yeah. us about club foot. Let's continue with that. All right. So, mm. um, further more plastic surgery. On the plastic surgeries that oh you do yes, yeah, at yes, Coastal yes, Hospital. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. So we had said that we, there is uh, cleft lip and palate mm. as one of the congenital abnormalities, mm. birth deformities. We also have um, urogenital abnormalities. What are those? Meaning that uh, uh, y it's a spectrum of, of disorders um, ranging from what we call hypospadias where in the opening of the urethra where urine actually is supposed to pass ends shortly before where it's supposed to be at the wow. tip of the penis. Mm. And it gets worse as it keeps going that you, you are not going to distinguish that whether this is a boy or a girl, what we call um, intersex or disorders of sexual differentiation. Mm. So it's, it's a bit of a spectrum and uh, we still have these uh, that are served at Koso Hospital. Mm. Um, we have uh, patients who are born without ears, without uh, or rather small jaws, abnormal uh, mm. facial features, uh, webbed necks. All these lie within the uh, congenital abnormalities that plastic surgeons actually do address. Mm. Um, hand abnormalities are also a big thing in plastic surgery. In fact, m the public assumes that uh, orthopedic surgeons are the <laughs> masters of the hand. Well, Indeed. we want to say that plastic surgeons 
do a lot of hand surgery and probably you're safer with any plastic surgery near you mm. operating on your hand. So uh, mm. there are many hand abnormalities, hand and foot abnormalities that, that are faced mm. uh, that we really do address. Mm. Uh, children born without thumbs, children born with uh, uh, fingers joined together um, are, are all part of uh, congenital plastic surgery mm. or pediatric plastic surgery. Mm. We also say that the other things are uh, are acquired burns. Burns disfigure you a lot, creating uh, deformities uh, mm. in many ways. And these are also part of plastic surgery. Uh, tumors, uh, which are largely on the body, soft tissue tumors, um, are what we do a lot as well. Mm. Can I end by saying that the other part that the public wants to hear? Yes. <laughs> Cosmetic surgery. Cosmetic surgery. Butt lift and all. Yes. Um, that Dorothy says is, is a little bit of uh, not a disability. Um, we do this. We are board certified plastic surgeons, so we shall not run away from the truth. Yeah, we do this and we do them at COSU. Hmm. Um, we this this is a spectrum of, of services as well that we we do offer, and we give our people a chance to have these services cheaper in the country rather than flying out of the country. In fact, we have patients that come from the nearby countries to just have these services. Mm -hmm. So these include tummy tucks, uh, breast reduction, breast uh, augmentation with or without implants. Uh, we have <coughs> things like liposuction and lipotransfer. Mm. Uh, we have facelifts and Botox. Even Botox? I'll give you one for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we have At the right time. <laughs> one for free for you. <laughs> I'm sure we have viewers who are really itching to get more of that information right here on NTV Uganda. Of course, I still do have Mr. Cornelius Masambu, Dr. Cornelius Masambu, and also Dorothy Mutabazi, the public relations officer for Kosu Hospital. By Kosu, we are talking about comprehensive rehabilitation services for people with disability in Uganda. That is it in uh, full. But of course, we are going to be taking a very short break and return with more information only here on NTV Uganda. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. with us right here on NTV Uganda. Romeo Busiku is my name. We do have a very pertinent conversation within our midst. We'd like to talk about uh, people with disabilities and how best we can rehabilitate those who are born with deformities. You might not have been born with a deformity, but somehow you were involved in an accident. Last year, in 2020, 2009, you lost the leg and you've been thinking, mm -mm. I'm not living life to the fullest. We are telling you that Kosu Hospital can actually get you another leg. It is possible. Let's say you were involved in an accident and then you suffered burns, your whole skin. You lost all your beauty and then you're like, mm -mm, people are not seeing me anymore. We are telling you that there is corrective surgery. There is plastic surgery that can be uh, done on you to ensure that you get back your full life. You lost your fingers during that accident. They could be replaced by these very good doctors that we have in our midst here. So indeed, we're talking about some of the uh, deformities that people are born with, others that people accrue as they grow or as they live their lives. So all that, it can be corrected courtesy of the comprehensive rehabilitation services for people with disability in Uganda, in short, Kosu Hospital. And indeed, I do have Mr. Masambu Cornelius with me here, Dr. Cornelius Masambu, and also Dorothy Mutabazi, the public relations officer for the same hospital. All right, let's get into it. We cut you short on the oh. issue of Botox. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had just given you an And many more. <laughs> yes. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so indeed, we are not really here to talk about the cleft lip and palate, yeah. the club foot and so forth. We are yeah. here to talk about the general uh, deformities that befall people and how best we can correct the same. Yeah, so yeah. we can continue on that note. Mm. All right. Uh, so what we are saying is mm. that uh, um, you don't need to sit back at home mm. and uh, spare the days of your life as a beggar or Indeed, as disabled. Yeah. Mm. What we are here to do is to improve your quality of life. Of course, the stakes are high mm. because what you come with is what we work with. Mm. 
all right um let's let's give an example um if if you had uh, this is very common among people casual laborers mm. people within uh, factories and they're working they sustain lots of hand injuries mm. um and and also we have nerve injuries and many other things you you find that your hand is not a hand it's just a fork mm -hmm. or a wreck that's all you can do we have to help you through surgery mm -hmm. through uh, physiotherapy to make sure that your tendons your nerves mm -hmm. get working again mm -hmm. we have an increasing number of children that are born with uh, what we call obstetric pulses mm. meaning that and it's very common among mothers that have uh, bouncing babies of above 3.5 kilos you just notice that your child cannot move their hand mm. it's paralyzed mm. what we are able to do is to give you your hand back working better than what you gave us mm. it could probably not be a hundred percent but we can guarantee it will mm. be better than what you gave us indeed um, so we have patients that have uh, been involved in accidents and for one reason or another have had their limbs cut off. Through COSU, we have uh, an orthopedic workshop that has 3D printing. Mm. So what, what's amazing is that with the other leg, we take a negative image and then create for you an artificial limb and not stop at that, teach you how to use it. Nice. Um, definitely that is not for free, mm. but I can guarantee you it's the cheapest you can get it at within the country. Mm. So um, we, we are pushing the limits both on our side, because uh, when we started out in 2010, we would give you a simple prosthetic mm. limb. But now we push the limits into 3D prosthesis. In terms of uh, orthopedic surgery, for example, we were not doing hip and knee replacement therapy. I see. But we pushed the limits, and now we are doing hip and knee replacement mm. therapy. We also have sports medicine. We were not doing that when we started out. Mm. But now, we are actually taking care of a number of uh, our sportsmen that are doing us national service at, at national level. I won't get personal with that. I see. But they sustain injuries to their knees mm. and through arthroscopy we are able to actually, all these are orthopedic services, mm. um, uh, and arthroscopy is using a camera, minimal invasive surgery, uh, get to repair what we call the cruciate ligaments that and the menisci that have been mm. uh, injured. Mm. So we are pushing the limits and we want the public to also push their limits on their, st on their doctors, you mm. know. Ask for more, we shall give it to you. That's where we are. Well, of course, you didn't mention the sportsmen, but uh, I do know that there are some people who are not really sportsmen, but uh, they drive every day. Yeah. He's yep. seated in that car. He's driving from SETA all the way to the city center and yeah. back again. Yeah. So let's also talk about that issue. And yeah. they also people who are at risk of having bone problems and so forth, mm. sitting in a car for too long and driving. Well, the truth is, mm. these largely get these problems of chronic back pain. Yes, yes. Right? Mm. Chronic back pain. And through our good orthopedic surgeons, um, we don't stop at prescribing medication, mm. but we, we, we have what we call CM machines and other things that mm. we use to introduce certain medication into the bones yes. that help you to actually get better and get that pain out of the way. So, mm. um, and, and, and highly skilled. Um, sports therapists and also uh, other back pain management f uh, physiotherapists that uh, train you in new postures that you can afford if that is your mm. job um, to get to get you uh, healed the way you mm. have to so mm. we get you and get you going indeed that's what we do all right that is uh, dr cornelius masambu working with Kosu hospital we also do have the pro for the same organization dorothy mutabazi she's going to let us in on some of the successes or challenges that they can actually verifiably boast of in the last 14 years we're talking about since 2009 during that time they also implemented the community development uh, project that is a community-based inclusive development approach under the bmz fund so we'd like to know more about that 
Uh, thank you so much. I would like to start off with uh, COSU achievements. Mm. Mm. Um, over the last 14 years, we've been able to perform over 60,000 surgeries wow. of children mm. with disability, and uh, we provided over 100,000 uh, therapy sessions mm. to our clients. Mm. Uh, that is not a small number. It's not not a small mm. number and uh, we continuously reach out to the most vulnerable communities uh, we work with a partner of 60 organizations all over Uganda mm. and other and other areas mm. uh, that refer patients to COSU these partner organizations mm. we are not meaning that we have we, we are not able to be in different parts of Uganda mm. but these partner organizations be able to identify the patients mm. and refer them to COSU. Uh, we have introduced 3D technology in mm. printing uh, artificial limbs. Those are the arms uh, and the legs. Uh, we, have, we are setting up a state-of-the-art rehabilitation center mm. and this is the first in Uganda, one-stop center for mm. all the rehabilitation services. I'm talking about sports medicine, I'm talking about computerized therapy that assesses the patient and mm. gives um, personalized treatment and therapy and uh, it's among the largest in Africa. Uh, uh, we have been able to to advocate for rights for people with disability mm. and um, and yes, very many other things. Provision of and, re and improving quality of life of people with mm. disability is our major focus, Indeed. and we pride in that. Mm. Uh, for the BMZ project, it's a running project for three years, and uh, it started out in 2020, mm. and it will end in 2023, with hope of uh, expanding. And uh, under the BMZ... So it's uh, ending this year, or 2024? 2023 mm. but we hope it can we be can renewed. get more mm. we mm. can be renewed and get more funds so and this is our last year this mm. is our last year and uh we appreciate cbm mm. and bmz for sponsoring this project with this project we've been able to to set up referral networks what are referral networks mm. these are uh, if you identify a child with disability yes which hospitals are you going to take them you may not be able to come to kosu there are regional referral hospitals, there are health centers, yes, so we train health workers at, this, at these different stations, uh, from village health teams to the different um, uh, nurses, to midwives, mm. when they identify a child with disability, to be able to provide the necessary care, mm. early detection is the best remedy that we can have to fight disability. Mm. Uh, we have vocational skilling for youth with disability. Uh, here we train uh, youth with disability to carry out maybe tailoring, hairdressing, for economic empowerment, for the different, uh, uh, if they can be such, uh, economically sustainable for themselves. Mm. Uh, we, con we also uh, with our partners, that is ours and uh, Katalema, we also c have different uh, focus groups. And mm. uh, these parent focus groups are to share experiences. If I have a child with disability, how did I manage this? How mm. am I managing being with a child with disability? If they have to use a wheelchair, if they have an artificial leg, how do we build this consensus from the community mm. to the children that we reach out to? Uh, we've been able to perform demo nutrition demonstration for mothers with uh, uh, cerebral palsy. Mm. Cerebral palsy is a permanent condition. Yes. We improve functionality. So how do you feed these children? How do mm. you provide the different services? Mm. And, uh, and yes, uh, we also carry out advocacy. We work with line ministries, mm. councillors for people with disability, NGOs, so that the work continues. Whereas the project Indeed. may have mm. a limitation, but we have sustainability in the grassroots that people will continuously advocate for people mm. with disabilities. And um, uh, working with ours and Katalema, the BMZ project uh, is in uh, Barara, Kasese, mm. and uh, Ibanda. In Was the east, mm. that is only for the BMZ project, but as course we have uh, mm. partners all over, yeah. even yeah. in South Sudan and Kenya. So the Tanzania. inclusive development approach is in like uh, 10 districts? It's in like 10 districts. Uh, in mm. the east, it is Iganga, Kamuli, uh, <coughs> Mayuge, mm. and um, just uh, one more. Mm. 
uh, even my people in Kampala and Wakiso, you're included. The, then for the central, it's Kampala <laughs> yes. and Wakiso. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so all those are being covered by... Mm. Now, the municipality, I've seen you grapple with some of these issues, especially <laughs> when it comes to the cleft lip and palate. So many yeah. of these cases are rife within Nansenam municipality. So indeed, just make your way to Kosu Hospital if, if you're a mother and you do not have the money for the such corrective surgery. They can actually subsidize all that yeah, at 100%, that's that's teach true. you how to feed your child even after. They do everything. Full rehabilitation indeed. Yeah, yeah. But how do you book an appointment? I know that is the $64,000 question that you would want Dorothy Mtabazi to answer. How do I book an appointment and how can I be assessed? Can I choose my own doctor or surgeon? Uh, thank you so hmm. much. Uh, we have two different uh, patients. Hmm. We have the general patients and the private patients. Hmm. And uh, the important statement I would like to say for hmm. every payment that you make, as a private patient, mm. we use the same funds to subsidize the patients who cannot, who are mm. vulnerable, cannot afford. Mm. So in the general patients, you, you can walk in or you can call us on uh, 0761 uh, 002 111 uh, or 0761 002 157. And uh, you'll be able to speak to our customer care mm. team. If you cannot call, you can WhatsApp us on those different uh, phones. And uh, if you cannot WhatsApp, you can go on the social media platforms. Uh, our Facebook uh, page is mm -hmm. Koso for people with disability. Our Twitter page is uh, Koso Hospital. Our LinkedIn is uh, Koso Rehabilitation Hospital. Mm -hmm. Please reach out. We can book for you that appointment. If you want more information, visit our website. That is www.kosuhospital.org for the private services. Mm. You can call in, you can say, I want to see Dr. Cornelius. Mm. We have uh, uh, about uh, 10 orthopedic surgeons mm. and uh, five yes, plastic surgeons. Yes, I would like to say, apart from Mulago, we mm. are the only place with we the highest. It. We are killing it. We are the <laughs> only <Yeah>. place <laughs> with the highest <laughs> number of orthopedic Indeed. surgeons. Mm. So and plastic you can, surgeons. And plastic, and plastic, mm. and plastic yeah. surgeons. Yeah, Dr. Cornelius true. cannot. Mm. Wait, <laughs> for me to mention plastic surgeons. Indeed. Yes, so, yes, you can choose the surgeon that you mm. want. You can book an appointment for a given time that mm. you're available. We work Monday to Friday from uh, 8 to 3 p.m. We request, if you're coming, if it would be good if you come as early as 10 a.m. for us to be able to <laughs> allocate you to a right surgeon, to plan in time. We always have some emergencies that are coming in. Mm. So if you come early, it's better for us to plan mm. for you. For the mothers within Nansana municipality, if you didn't get grasp of any of the information we've shared here when it comes to where you can find uh, these experts, you do know where I live within Nansana municipality. Come to my house if you have a challenge. <laughs> um, Yes, I'll be registering most of those parents, those mothers and fathers who are having those challenges. And I'll take that information all the way to Dorothy Mutabazi. Yeah. Is that reason? That's the oh, major reason why I came to your area, Nansana <laughs> Municipality, so that you can actually tell me what your problems are. So indeed, if you are a mother, you're grappling, you do not have transport to take that child to the hospital. Yeah. Come to my house, let us talk. I can get you information that can lead you to Mr. Um, that is uh, Ms. Mutabazi here, and also Cornelius Masambu, and you'll be able to be uh, helped in that regard. Corrective surgeries are done at Kosu Hospital. Yeah. But then, why, why preempt? Let me give Mr. Masambu a few uh, minutes so that he can wrap up his submission. Mr. Before Masambu. he wraps up, I would like to mm. say we are located uh, mm. on Ontario Road mm. uh, in Chisubi, mm. just after Kawuku. Or before the or, or police before station. before the Chisubi. police, police station, station of yeah. Chisubi. Even if you, if you go to any taxi, tell mm. them I'm going to a hospital for bones. Mm. They owe Edward Iroli Amagumba. Uh, yes. The conductors will be able to mm. bring you to the right spot. We are just n next to the road, mm. so it will be easy for you to access us. Mr. Masambu, I'm a father with a child with a disability. I'm a mother with a child with a disability. What should I have at the back of my mind moving forward before we get out of this show? Mm. Um, so Thank you, Romeo. Um, the thing is that there is hope mm. for children with disability. Let me, let, me, let me just share with you the experience that apart from the, the ladies and mm. the, the, the gentlemen that are within the rural areas, we are having lots of uh, baby showers, mm. all right? So we find that our land colleagues, mm. when they 
have the baby delivered, they discover, oh, mm. the child has a cleft, mm. the child has a club foot, the child has an abnormality. Mm. And what they do, first thing is try and go back to their home and then shift. What? You know, mm. it, it, yes. and, and it's understandable. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone mm. wants to see the baby mm. and you don't want to show off a baby who has a disability. So we d we what we don't want for you is to be locked in depression because your child has a deformity. Mm. Come to Kosu. Mm. We will see you. We have counselors, we have psychologists, we have the surgeons that perform the operations mm. uh, and the, 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 the um, therapists that help us within this uh, nutritional mm. support. We have you covered. Indeed. Come to us. Don't shift Indeed. neighborhood. Don't deny your child or your neighbor's mm. child or your, your, your relative a chance to this that is golden. Mm. We are there for you. Like I said, we get you and get you going. And there is also another important question. A viewer is watching and they are thinking, I could get that artificial limb this week and a year from now it's no longer viable. So how long do these artificial limbs, joints and implants actually last, Dr. Masamu? Yeah, so the, the implants, mm. those last forever. Indeed. The artificial mm. limbs, the challenge comes in at what time did we give it to you? If, for example, you are 10 years old mm. and you get an artificial limb, you're growing tall, right? You will need another. Mm. So because of that, we'll have to adjust mm. what you have and Indeed. the kind of implant, I mean the kind of uh, prosthesis we give you mm. should be able to accommodate for such delays mm. or for such uh, uh, challenges that you're going to have. Mm. If it has any features of wear and tear, we still have the workshop that can fabricate, mm. that can repair, and that can also give you a new mm. one. So that's true. The implants that go into your body, some of these, for example, the hip and knee implants, mm. these last forever. Mm. Um, unless for one reason or another, they have started hurting you or they have started releasing pus for any reason, mm. that they have to be taken out. Mm. All right. Uh, we do have some two minutes uh, that are left for you, Dorothy Mutabazi, as you're parting shorts. What kind of uh, beautiful words do you have for our people before I let you go? I would like to mm. tell the public that there is hope for people with mm. disability. Mm. Please reach out. If you have an accident, don't first run to Kosu. Mm. Go to the nearest place. Yeah. Please, we don't handle emergencies. Run to your nearest hospital. Reach out. If you have a child with disability, do not hide them. Reach out to mm. people to help you. It may be visual impairment. Mm. It may not necessarily be physical. Mm disability or other conditions reach out the services mm. are available mm. do not deny these people they are right speaking of other conditions dr masambu i do have my acid victims yes yes it was 2010 and somehow a color lover jilted lover or something ended up pouring acid on this unsuspecting person 10 years or 13 years from the incident can that person still get through corrective surgery and they get help Yes, they can. Wow. Yes, they can. Yes, mm. they can. How so? Mm. We have found, actually, there are quite a number of them mm. um, under the Acid and uh, Burn Survivors Association mm -hmm. that's run by, I think, Dr. Ben King. Mm. He's a plastic surgeon in Kampala. But we, we, we find uh, them coming to us for many reasons, mm. to restore their identity, to help them mm. get some form back, you know? So. I see. I think the best to say is that, come, let us see you and see what we can offer you. Indeed. Thank you very much. That is indeed. Dr. Cornelius Masambu, a plastic surgeon at Kosu Hospital. And also, we did have Dorothy Mutabazi, a public relations officer working with the same hospital, Kosu Specialized Hospital. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to us about this really, really pertinent conversation indeed.
Yeah. And to you, the people within Nansana municipality and the surrounding environs, when you see Romeo Busiku, you have the right to stop my Subaru and talk to me. Yes, I want to hear all your problems. You have a child that needs to be rehabilitated. You have a surgery that is too expensive that you'd want to be done on your child. Romeo Busiku would like to point you in the right direction so that you could be helped. My name is Romeo Busiku, and of course, I did have Cornelius Masambu and Dorothy Mutebazi right here on the show. Many thanks for having made the time to listen and watch. Till we meet again, have yourselves a blessed day.